Hello everyone and welcome to our coverage of the UCI Mountain Bike World Cup. We're here at the UCI Mountain Bike World Series Festival, Haute Savoie in France, for one of the big, big cross-country races. Just get my breath back after the downhill yesterday and what's left of my voice, but there is plenty of racing ahead of us today for the cross-country Olympic. Starting off with the men's under 23, the sixth round of that championship. My name is Rick McLaughlin. Joining me in the booth for this one, Ollie Beckinsale. Ollie, good to go racing in Leger as ever, isn't it? Oh, I love a cross-country race in Leger. It's got such a history. We go back to 96 for the World Cup here, Worlds 2004, Worlds last year. Ah, it's classic circuit. Well, we are getting the riders on the start grid for the only 23 men's cross-country Olympic race. But 17, 18 degrees out there, much cooler than it has been the last couple of days. It's been like uh, being on the surface of the sun. This place has been roasted. Still a bit of moisture on the track from overnight. Um, it may well be spilt beer after the downhill after party, hard to tell. But Paul Schnell uh, from Germany. Getting ready to go. Yeah, what a day of downhill racing we had yesterday. Go and check out the highlights of that one online. GCM Plus, Eurosport, Bjorn Riley. Trek Future Racing takes to the line. Gustav Heavy Patterson. A good cross country short track race for him earlier in the weekend. The Dane. Luke Vidman for Thomas Maxson. Thomas Maxson, always, always super strong. That Swiss team, full of that country's biggest cross-country talents. Carter Woods won in Val di Sole Trentino earlier in the season. A threat in the short track and a threat in the cross-country Olympic. One of the big, big talents emerging from this pack of big, big talents. Riley Amos, Trek Factory Racing, XC looking good. Another one that you just think whenever he starts converting that raw talent into consistent finishes will be right up there with the very best. Adrian Boishy in the overall title leader's jersey. Looking stronger and stronger with every race. Boishy racing at home in France. This is a big one for him, Ollie. Oh, it's going to be a massive one. I mean, we saw the Koretsky in the men's short track. Yeah, that home. We were, me and Bart were talking and we're saying it probably raises your power by 5% being at home. 5%, it's not nothing. And as I say, normally, as we see confirmation of the starting grid, Mattis Gay, Tom Shellikin's in there as well. Yeah, the... As is typical, under 23 racers often actually get the best of conditions. It's a bit cooler this morning. Alexander Hudima in there for KMC MTB racing team. Luca Martin, who can forget the heartbreak he suffered. Val de Sole Trentino earlier in the year. Mario Bear, plenty of climbing in this one might suit him. Janis Bauman, Van der Vault, Ericsson. Is the riders onto the line? Tension building. Should be a good one, this Ollie. Looking forward to it. Yeah, it's going to be, going to be fast. What I'm going to have to watch, though, is this dew. You know, it's a really early race and they've got these flat grass turns. And I think the start, they're going to have to be super careful. Okay, the lights have gone red. That means they are under starters' orders and we wait for them to go green. Because green means one thing in cross-country racing. Green means go, and they are racing at the UCI Mountain Bike World Cup here in Haute Savoie, Leger. On the 23 men's cross-country Olympic, they're all off the line safely, which we haven't always been able to say this season. You can see the dust kicked up off this long, long climb. 
It looks like Luke Vukman on the left. So, so powerful, Vukman. And even this first section, it's only kind of like, although it's a, a wide track, there's only really one good racing line. And we can see them. Boisier on the number one bike on that pink specialized S works for Trinity Racing. Yeah, and I think we're going to see Boisier go off hard. There's always that bit of extra adrenaline from the home race. Yeah, you get the feeling Boisier might just go off the front of this race like a firework once he gets warmed up. Yeah. I mean, the guy's in good form here. Second, the last race, number one board, winner of a round as well this year. It's been really interesting watching them. There's been different riders ebbing in and out of form all season long, but Adrian Boisier has been the, the real consistent yeah, yeah. presence it's, at the front. We've seen yeah, four different winners, five different winners now. And, um, I, yeah. But there's, he's the one that's had the... Everyone else has had a one round where they've had a clanger, yeah. whereas he's just been solid as well as exactly. his win. Exactly, and even... I mean, it's, it's all action, the under-23 men's right from the gun, and Riley Amos in second wheel at the minute. Even those races that... Boashi doesn't win and you get a bit caught up with the fact that he's been beaten by Lilo or somebody else. Yeah. He's still second or third. Yeah, he's second, he's third, whereas one of the others will have a sixth or a seventh. Yeah. Um, and whether it's a mechanical or a, a, a flat leg day. See the top of this climb. They've, they've absolutely made mincemeat of that first climb. Yeah. It's so, so long here. There's, there's famously, there's two stumps right on the exit of the top of this climb that are right in the middle of the track yeah. and just make it really, really awkward to get through. There's a lot of features in here, man-made rock gardens, some natural rock gardens, all at the top of this first hill, very technical, very tight. The start from those cross country, you see you go back mid-pack, just that dog leg in the woods. They're losing minutes. Carter Woods moving Carter up. Woods. He had a bad start. He's actually trying to close back on the front, guys. But he's having to expand that energy now just because of losing five places on the start. And they come into the woods now, and this becomes really critical. Um, with your start position. Yeah, I ran the track the other morning and I was really, really surprised by it. Once the woods come in, it's so technical. You really are, you're busy throughout the whole yeah. time. There's, and there's lots, of, there's lots of little sections where you need to be really, really accurate with your entry. You need to be in the right line at the Why? start of it. There's multi-line. It's rooty, it's rocky, it's ins and outs. And you, we see, you know, I was up on the course yesterday in the recce time, and you see the amount of riders spending a lot of time on what looks like relatively simple bits of track. But here we come into the woods, multiple line options, rock, route. Once you get into the line, when you recce on your own, it's not that bad. But once you're in the line of riders, the chance of clipping out, making a mistake, burping a tire is, is pretty high. Well, here we go there into that wood section. Now you see that big off camber log to begin with. And you can see just how dry the conditions are. The downhill yesterday resembled Val de Sole at its worst a lot of the time. There's that very, very fine powdery dust. Riley Amos taking a different line through there than Boashi held the riders left. But this whole section, it's, it's really smart. There's, there's, there's so many line options everywhere. Um, and there's no one obvious one. You know, you, they might give you four or five lines, but there's one that everyone's going to use here. You see people trying different things. You saw Riley Amos and Bushik, two different lines, you know. It's, yeah, it worked as well. Both of them seem to work well as they yeah. come out in this big, wide open section before hitting back into the woods again. But it's, it, it's you know, Leger is, is characterized by the, you know, the big roots it has, but it's been so dry here, deep dust, and it's so slippery. It's kind of the, the polar opposite of the mud day, but it's yeah. equally as treacherous. It's a funny sport, isn't it? There's a, there's a tipping point at both ends of the scale, you know, this little drop off into the little chute then. So this corner's here, so deep in dust now. And, you know, if you go offline, we're going to see it maybe later in the race once riders get a little more fatigued. You've only got to go slightly out of that kind of dust rut and you're going to be down. We saw a lot in the downhill yesterday that, um, that phenomenon where there's a line that gets burned in and it's maybe only two or three inches wide on either side of it. There's all the material that used to be there that's been just dispatched to either side of it. And then once you hook up on, once you get a, a tire into that dust, it can lead to disaster. But boy, she and Amos are making a break for it out yeah. the front. Big gap. Yeah. You know, we're going to one climb in. I mean, the course is characterized. We've got about two four minute climbs, main climbs, but they've, yeah, they're off. They're like off. They are off. Nobody else in shot currently. Boashi and Amos battling it out here in Leger. Yeah, and if we look at the last race, they were first and second. They had a good old battle in Palorensal. Seven seconds, the that's, difference. That's Back to Wiedemann, Woods, Martin, Muzi, Vitone, Riley. So some big hitters in that chase group. Yeah, yeah. I think we'll see Riley come through. He had a good 
We had Worlds last year. He likes this place, doesn't yeah. he? So out of the current crop of riders, he was the highest placed in last year's World Championships here. So, yeah, he's got legs, likes the course. But yeah, Boashi, he's not hanging around, eh? No, he is not at all. He fancies replicating the sort of form that Pauline ferran Bravo dominated the UCI World Championships with whenever, she, whenever they were here last season, where she just disappeared off the front, and that was all they wrote. But Amos hanging in there manfully behind him. You can see that gap visually on screen now. Yeah, and I think if you're Amos, you're just going to let Boashi set the tone. He looks like he's really got the fire today, and I think I'm just looking to sit behind. Is it a case, yeah, is it a case of you know that Boashi is going to be at the front of this race? You yeah. know that he's going to be the man to watch. So if you can just match his pace, yeah. let, him do, make, let him do the decision making. 100%. You know, I must say, he's very good technically. Yeah, all these guys are, but he's particularly good. You know, I think I'll just get the bungee cord out, get it on, <laughs> get it on the seat post of Washi and hang in there. There's Vittoni through the bottom of the screen. Simone Avendetto, one. Number 23 is here. The UCI World Championships the last time out. Yeah, we just have this. This is the, this, this second climb is more gradual. Obviously, it's all benched into the hillside. But as we come up into the woods here, there's a real hard kick. Um, and we can see uh, if you were going to kind of do a last lap attack, this is probably where you'd put it down, and then you're into some really technical sections again. It's quite loose, the surface yeah. as well, through here. Difficult to get the bike to hook up. That turn is steeper than it looks as yeah. well, so it's not an easy section to attack on. Yeah, and you can really see the giveaway sign is when the elbows drop down, <laughs> then the arms really start to kick in just here, and it's really techy here. And you come up round here, so you've got some really loose corners, really rooty. Lilo now in the third place in that chasing group, so yeah. we know that he has got some horsepower. 13 seconds back, though, so these two, in particular, Boashi, really clubbing some time into them. Yeah, I mean, they've extended, what, another six seconds for on that climb? I mean, that's a lot. You can see that dust just hanging in the trees as well. Really, really difficult to breathe. But yeah, this section of the woods, yeah, the, the, the recce time yesterday, so many riders just doing laps of this, like almost making it a little short track circuit <laughs> and just practicing this area up in the top. It's probably the toughest bit, the most decisive bit if you're into a group on the last lap. There's definitely, there's a lot of make or break line choices yeah. in here, different routes through it that you need to make sure that you absolutely nail to make the course as quick as possible for yourself. So yes, Lilo and Martin again. Martin, French rider as well, home turf. Mixed year. We talked oh. about the start where somebody had like they have a standout ride and then a, and then a bad day. Yeah, if you missed it, he had that ride in Val de Sole Trentino where he was faultless throughout, went off like a locomotive at the front of the race and had an absolutely tiring lead of about 50 odd seconds. And then on the very last lap, while still attacking, Double punctured and uh, Carter Woods steam by took the victory. I've seen him in the big four cross section yeah, of the track. Nice big gap jump before. It's a real nice little feature. It makes me feel old that bit of track. I remember riding that bit of track <laughs> on a press launch back in like 2003 or something, but it's hard to tell. It's hard to tell which of. Uh... Oh! Amos goes down, slips off the ramp. That will be that morning dew. <laughs> that will be that morning dew you mentioned, Ollie. Riley Amos down there, and then all of a sudden, Adrian Boashi by himself. So just on that drop, just watch Riley Amos' front wheel now. Whoa. Straight out the front door. It looks like he's up and running. That hurt. Yeah, that hurt. You he knew Boashi, nothing about Boashi's that. Boashi's front wheel just goes a bit. There. Riley's, yeah. Boashi caught that, you know. Well. I thought it'd be slippery, but I didn't think I'd see that. <laughs> yeah, we can see from our time and screens in the booth, Dario Lilo. Hopefully the bike's okay. Has got past, there he is, in the red national champs jersey of Switzerland. Has got past Riley Amos. Riley Amos, we'll have to see if he comes into the tech zone. I don't, the bike looked all right. Lucky it, side, it, it was, there's, oh, they're all going down. They're all going down now. Yeah, there's definitely a bit Joe of moisture Blackmore, on British that drop-off. Joe Blackmore getting caught out by that. But I think it's just, there's no, uh, it's just planks, you know. There's so, no matting on it. Yeah, and it's, oh, it's been in the shade only till about five minutes ago. There's someone else ago. dying on it now as well. Oh, yeah, yeah. Whoa. 
this, uh, yeah, it should. So we are hearing that we think that this, that feature is being closed for the next lap. It was missed out in the morning recon anyway. And Boashi wouldn't have had an idea then, I think, because you're, you're set up for the next corners. You haven't got an opportunity yet. And he's down now, head's down. Adrian Boashi has just gone past our commentary booth. Like, he is chasing the guy on the trials bike who's clearing the course in front of him, and he's catching him. He's gone past us like a train. Yeah, looking super smooth. So Lilo. There's Lilo, Amos. Amos looked all right, just adjusting that shoe, shaking his head. We'll see if he has to go into the tech feed zone for anything. Lap two at six underway now. Luckily, I think the bike slided down. It was the non-derailer side. Yeah. So hopefully that hasn't caused too many kind of mechanics. The one that can catch people out as they come down is the shoes. A lot of the shoes have these kind of buckles. The buckles but, yeah. now, and you can literally smash them off if you come yeah, down to the side. We saw, we saw um, famously Matthew Von der Poel in the men's road race at the Worlds. Here we see replay off the start then. Riley Amos in the blue off track factory racing alongside this man, Adrian Boashi. Alexander Houdima, look at the shot through there. But as bone dry as that was, that drop. But even just walking up to the booth, it, how wet the grass is this morning. Yeah. <laughs> you just get this dew everywhere. And a bit in the shade, it's, it's, it's slippery. It's like it's just rained everywhere. Now this is a long and lonely climb. It's sort of, it's a, it's a horrible climb for a couple of reasons. One, the length, and secondly, you can see the surface of it, really pockmarked, really rough. Hard to find a nice rhythm that works the whole way up yeah. it. Hard to get out the saddle. You're not, yeah. yeah, you're not turning your brain off and just whizzing up it. Yes, yeah, it's a, it's a na nasty, nasty clock. That's horrible. Lilo, yeah. Amos, Woods, Martin are the chasing group. 16 seconds behind Adrian Boashi now. There's Luke Vidman. But Amos looking like but he's recovered well. You know, he's, he looks like he's pretty composed. How tough is it to just reset after something like that, Ollie? Because that's, really that spikes the heart rate. Bjorn Riley, we can see yeah, the number board down. hanging off the bike. I wonder if he's been down as well. Yeah, he's so he's jettisoning the glasses as well. Yeah, he's not looking too happy with life. No. Something's gone on there. But yeah, I think once you've had a proper off like that, especially once it's your race has started so well, you've done the hard bit, you've got away, you've got around the first lap, and you're just settling into what's going to be a massive fight for the win. And then on a really what is relatively simple part of the course, you're on your ass. He's had a, and he's had a few clangers this season, hasn't he? He's had a few little bits of bad luck and things haven't gone his way right the Amos, either by design or by accident. And yeah, you just, just feel that it needs to start clicking for him because the talent is obviously there, the power is obviously there. Yeah, I mean, it was great for him seeing yeah, the last race in Palaisol getting a well-deserved win because, like you say, he's deforming the condition and the mechanics being a bit up and down. But he's, yeah, he's, he, yeah, composed back at the front now. Which is great. What you don't want to see is, a, you know, I put that crash down as almost a bad luck one rather than a bad, yeah, bad skill one. He's just, you know, well, you saw, a yeah, bridge. it nearly took out Boashi as well, didn't yeah. it? You know, it was just, it was just luck that he managed to catch it. And it's great that, yeah, Amos, his bike's in one piece, he's in one piece. He was second to Boashi in the short track earlier in the weekend, so clearly likes the place, clearly goes well round here. Yeah, and he's one of the, I guess, more the pure climbers in the field, you know, physically. So if you have a good short track as a pure climber around here, you think, get on the course. He's back in the second place now, Riley Amos. We have seen that this season, doesn't know when he's beaten. 17 seconds back, and I don't know what I mean. Ollie, I say this completely as a, as a, as a non-racer, but if you're going to have a crash like that, best to have it at the start of the race. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree 100%. You know, get it out of the way. <laughs> you've got time, you've got... The nice thing is with these guys, and it's one of the benefits, is to sit there compared to the kind of... The H riders, they're under so much more pressure. You know, make one mistake, that's it, day done, weekend done, year done. Where these guys, you know, 17 seconds, which is what he's lost at the end of the day, that's, that will be the gaps between riders. You know, it might cost him one place, but it hasn't cost him the race. You know, you can recover. Yeah, just to plug it one more time as well, if you missed yesterday's downhill race and here from Haute Savoie, Leger, go and check out the replay later on this afternoon. It was absolutely, absolutely simple and start to finish. What a downhill race we had in both elite women and elite men's categories.
and they are, uh, uh, put it politely, they're still mopping up the town after the after party last night. The videos are doing the rounds of just how loose things got. Who could have predicted it here in Leger, anyway? But mountain biking alive and well for the UCI Mountain Bike World Series Festival Haute Savoie. Ten days of non stop mountain bike action. Book ended next weekend by the UCI Enduro World Cup Finals. Titles to be decided there. But right now, it's the under 23 men's cross country Olympic World Cup on track. And this man, Adrian Boishy, a Frenchman at home in France, leading the way. He had Riley Amos in close contention with him before a crash for Amos on a drop. And it took out a lot of riders, actually. Wet surface to it. Knew very, very little about it, Amos, before he was down. But yeah, recovering well. You know, 17 seconds was the gap he got to Boishy. But Amos looks like he's uh, he's attacking off the front of this group now yeah. as well. And fancy's catching Boishy. I think he's got to be patient. I mean, the risk is when you've had a big crash like that, it, it, you will get a surge of adrenaline. And it's trying to control that. The risk, you know, he was clearly matching Boishy on the first lap. The, what he doesn't want to do is panic. He wants to pull that gap back if he's got the legs over a couple of laps, rather than thinking, oh, i just got to get back there and really kind of attacking and being too aggressive. Especially on this course with these climbs, it, they come so quick. And the, the descents are very rough, especially today, so you don't get that recovery at all. And it's like crucially as well with that crash, as you said, non-drive side, so the opposite side of the bike where the, the gears and everything that's essential for it to move forward are. So, I mean, if you're going to crash on one side of it, yeah. That's the side to do it. So, got away with it largely. Yeah, and, and and you're on the grass. I mean, it's like yeah. crashing's one thing, but it's it's what you land on. It really is the key. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, and if you're going to go onto a bit of grass, happy days. Yeah, I've definitely always found that to be the case. Anyway, Carter Woods just sitting on the back of this group slightly as we look through the dust in the trees. Beautiful shots here, around 18, 19 degrees out there at the minute. The place is heating up. It's been baking hot. All week in Leger. Yeah, I mean, some guys, they, the under 23 riders have got it a little easy. They're racing just before the sun's come up. This is perfect temperatures to race. It's it. actually, I was going to say, it's perfect bike racing yeah. conditions out there at the minute. Much of the course still under shade as well, but dry on little punches like that, but not dry on that drop. That took out so many of the big names on the last lap. We are hearing that that has been closed, that feature for this lap, so. Washi won't have to roll the dice on it again. Well, I really like this section up in here, ins and outs. And this morning, yeah, see the little drone following behind, it's kind of cool. They're loud when they follow you as well. They've decided they're right in the back of your head, but they're usually at a safe distance. You can see just Washi balancing his inputs on the pedals perfectly through there. Great to watch, great cross-country racing. Yeah, and if you, there's always that, I think it's almost undecided. In the, in the elite women's later, we'll see some hardtail bikes, but here it's all full suspension to the men on this sort of circuit. Funny you should say that. Yeah, we interviewed Mona Mitterwalner earlier in the weekend, and she's sort of given sort of a knowing smile and a half wink saying, I think you'll see a few big names out on the hardtails yeah. this weekend. So obviously plan to do so herself. But raced, um, I think she was on the full sus in the end, in the short track. Mm -hmm. Le Comte was on a hardtail. I saw Pauline Ferrand Prevost was on the hardtail yesterday in training, and she used a hardtail for the Worlds last year, so I think in the women's you're going to see a couple of those. She likes the, the hardtail, Pauline, yeah. doesn't she? she? And again at Worlds in Glentress, that new Pinaretto hardtail was released and ridden to victory, so yeah. I think once you get some good vibes off a bike, you know, you want to stick with it. Interesting bike, more uh, more triangles than a than a bar of Toblerone. But <laughs> we join this section again. So yeah, I, I rode this section. It must have been, well, I don't know, 2008 maybe. It's hard to work out which of us is well or worse. <laughs> But super fast, you can see all the little uh, braking bumps. He's catching the moto here, Boashi. That moto to needs to get it. a move on, yeah. And he, he's got the benefit of an engine, he's got no excuse. And there is that ramp, so it's, oh, is it still, it's still in, yeah. They'll all definitely know about it now. You can see a bit of moisture just kicking yeah, up off the tires there. But Boashi's smart. 
You know, you didn't see the crash, whether he's heard about it, but see how he went, how wide he yeah, learned. Yeah, look, everybody's setting up really to just straight line off yeah. the end of it as opposed to uh, trying to do any turning on it. I mean, that was it. it was, so he was completely on the angle, really cutting the corner of it. Yeah. And that but is kind of one of the key skills of mountain biking, isn't it? It's one of the fundamentals of only really trying to ask the bike to do one thing at once. Yeah. Don't ask it to turn and brake at the same time. You see Dario Lilo just with a foot out round that corner, round that right hander. Yeah. So grip really it's at a premium. Mud now. Yeah. yeah, with that voice in him. Once you start, it's almost like that cyclocross grass. You can ride it as soon as you get 10, 20, 100 people going around a grassy corner. It, next thing, it's like the slipperiest thing known to man yeah. is, is turned over grass. Into this big man made rock section there. Boashi. He's looking super smooth. It's that bit when you get, you see falling from Provoke. It's that style of go out lap one, get a gap, and don't give a monkeys about anybody else. Yeah. You just put your head down, and you almost, they look like they're doing recce laps. Really fast, just boom, doo, 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 lap after lap after lap, just piecing it together and almost forgetting they don't look back. No. And we didn't see, well, actually, I haven't seen him look, look turn his head around yet. But that's the thing, he'll have known that Riley Amos was with him, but it, yeah. it didn't really matter one bit to him because. Hey. It's going so hard. Look at the shots through here, though. Beautiful to see. Yeah, it's really cool. The early morning light here in Leger. Full day off mountain bike cross country race. And there is Riley Amos. Clear off the chasing group now. So trying to bridge the gap across to Adrian Boishy at the front of this race. 13 seconds adrift. Not undoable for a man of his talents. Behind him is Martin. And Carter Woods, always in the hunt. Yeah, full day of mountain bike cross country Olympic racing. These under 23 men getting us underway. Then it's under 23 women after that. And they are followed by the big guns, the elite women and the elite men on track from one o'clock this afternoon. Book yourself, book yourself a seat in the sofa. You're going nowhere. And that top five is, they have that, those are your guys from this year. They're, they've established yeah. yourself. There's no wild cards in there. We've already done, those are the top under 23s. And they've been so close this year. So such a competitive category. Yeah, after this then, there is a couple of weeks break as the series goes stateside. We've got Snowshoe in West Virginia, Mont Saint Anne in Quebec to finish things off. Ollie, in terms of the, uh, the business part of the season, rides for next year are deals done already or are they being done here i mean leger a massive race yeah. for the the mountain bike industry so many big brands are here so many marketing representatives are here it's a is busy this, race is this a busy weekend yeah this is a busy weekend i've seen i've seen i think i've seen three it's definitely two a potential three uh mountain bikers sat in quiet corners of hotels with people that aren't necessarily connected to their team. Well, they're having a coffee and it's not their team truck. Yeah, I've noticed a few <laughs> of those few of around. Yeah, yeah, a few. Um, oh, you're here. Yeah, and especially for the U23 riders, you know. Yeah, crucial. Someone like Wash, he's, he, he, ha he has a, a development team. The Trinity Racing team is really a development team that focuses on the U23 guys. Uh, Amos is already part of that Trek factory setup. Yeah. But you see some of these guys, the ones that are maybe fourth and fifth and sixth, great riders, but might not be in a factory team. They're almost as privateers still. And they'll be looking to get up into that factory team, not just for a paycheck, but for the backup. You but know, the moment they're still cleaning their own bikes on yeah. a Saturday night. But we see, uh, we see it a lot in junior downhill racing at the minute. So many of the big talents already on teams or on yeah. satellite teams of big teams. It is, as the sport grows in popularity and becomes more professional, those uh, the young talents who you know could be snapped up for a bag of chips and a handshake, that's kind of done now, isn't it? Carter yeah. Woods is on Giant already. They're all on big squads. And, yeah. and a lot of that, I guess, is learning how to live and act like a pro. And I think part of that, we're seeing these riders on factory teams. I think a big part of that is that it's, it's now televised. I think that's a big deal. So, whereas previously, and it's one of the changes this year, is the, the under 23 races is getting more of a highlight in, in the weekend and, it, and it's getting the coverage it deserves. And as a result, if you're in the top five of this, you're getting TV time. Yeah. So they're the factory teams that they're in. Yeah. And the same with du ju Junior DH now. People know about it. They know who's racing. If you're winning that, you're getting you're televised now. It's they've worked it out, haven't they? Especially in downhill, they've worked out the idea that the satellite squad could be on 
all your factory teams, oppositions, components, yep. learning how they work, learning where the speed lives. And there's definitely, a, as a rider, you get a history with a company and a bike, and if you're being supported as a junior, it's going to be your first choice as a, as a senior. You want to stay on that equipment, stay with the people you know, stay with the people that you've got you know, faith in, I guess. So. So Boashi, you know, he's on the Trinity team, which is really like, say, it's a, a specialised sponsored development team. Your natural progression, I guess, from Trinity specialised racing would be specialised factory racing. Yeah. yeah. And that's who we saw Blevins. So Christopher Blevins was a Trinity rider and then stepped up to the factory team. So it's a really nice kind of stepping stone. It's an obvious way move, isn't yeah. it? Yep. It all goes on. A lot of it is going on this weekend. A lot of deals being done. Super interesting time. Of course, we the season ends. There's a bit of a, a collective hangover, and uh, and then the press releases start dripping out through the off season. Such and such is signed with X. And I think especially we've had a, a hard run back to back of, these, of European races, and it's it feels like a real key part of the season. Like I say, we, there is a chance to catch his, everyone to catch their breath over the next few weeks before that last big push going stateside. Yeah, West Virginia, snowshoe. Is that gap stable? It is, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Hey. 18 seconds now the difference between Adrian Boashi and Riley Amos by, I, by our clocks here in the booth. Luca Martin, 26 seconds back off that. Yeah, and that gap. The pressure from Amos has pushed straight through. Normally, you would expect that kind of second group of four or five guys to fall. But because of the pressure of Amos in the rush to get back to the front, that group has just smashed itself to pieces. It's all over the place. Yep. Dario Lilo runs out the top five behind Carter Woods. Yeah, and it's whether Luca Martin and Woods can just get that that bit of synergy together, you know, if they can keep pushing each other on. I'm always fascinated by that in uh, cross-country racing, actually. Do you see the, the feed tech zone? Riders just working their way back out of it again. Good entry and exit for it today. Doesn't cost you too much time to go in. The bottom of the climb. Yeah, always interested in that in cross-country racing because there's, there's, they don't talk to each other much. There isn't much verbal communication, no. but riders will know when it's time to work together and when to push on. It's that road tactics kicking so easily. And you know that a lot of people from the outside who don't know the cross-country sport will think they're probably always fighting each other. It's, yeah. it, it's not the case. You know, you're working together. You try not to trip each other up. You know if somebody's... So if I was in a group of two and I know the other rider was a bit better on the DH, I'd let them through and then I'd want to have their wheel to show me the better lines. You know, you're trying to work together to try and help each other out. The bigger unit you put on the flat, and then you've, you've given them a chance to hold on on the climb. You're just trying to work together, and you make these little kind of unofficial agreements. <laughs> and all you want to do is just get to the finish line. And then only in that last half a lap, then you think about it. Then you battle. Then you battle. But until then, it's a, a kind of group time trial, really. You want to get from A to B as fast as you can in the best place. Yeah, and we do see it, you know, riders get caught up racing each other and it just, it, all it does is it hurts the legs and it hurts the time. Yeah. Poichy though, absolutely no signs of hurt from him at the minute, 21 seconds though, so he's extended that in the last sector alone, ahead of Riley Amos, Luca Martins in third. Nice Part. thing about it for Poichy, and this course there's lots of zigzags and outs and backs, and he'll be able to really get a marker of where Amos is because you'll see him on the same section of course multiple times and be able to have a really good idea. And if he sees him starting to close that gap and if he's got a bit left, he can just squeeze it again and he can hold that at that kind of 20 seconds or so. Yeah, we always talk about it in cross country racing. The, the visual, so, so important being able to see where the rider in front of you is, the rider behind you, how close they are. Using little markers on the course, maybe it's a tree or a, a marker pole. Advertising, boarding, whatever it is, Riley Amos making heavy weather of that route section through there, but survived it. Yeah, you can, you can, it's not so much gaining time in these, but you can just lose yeah. so much. So he's so close then to clipping out, then you have to do this kind of really awkward get going again. 
as a result, you know, there's five seconds gone. So you might work so hard to get free back on a hill and then you just throw five away on a yeah, like a rock it's garden. actually it's an interesting point. Um, the UCI World Champion Charlie Hatton made yesterday during the downhill was that in Leger it feels like the downhill track and as well actually I think this cross country track it's kind of about not losing time as opposed to gaining time. Yep. There's a lot of just little nibbly stuff that you need to get right. It's, you're not going to make a fortune of time up on it. It's but it could cost you time. That little gap jump yeah. across the lap berm, good example off it by Boishi. So you don't lose time, really, if you don't do the gap. But yeah. what you do is on the next bit, you carry better speed and you gain a second. Yeah. And it's like a second here, second there, five seconds on a rock garden when you clip out. There's ten. And you're like, where did that come from? And it's just, these, like you say, these little nibbles. There we are, Boishi, safely over that drop. It's got direct sunlight on it now, so hopefully it's uh, dried out after that. First lap that took out Riley Amos, as we see a young master at work here. Adrian Boishi leads the way in Leger. Well, yeah, Boishi looks like a really, he's got the lot. It's, it's the full package. You know, obviously amazing bike, but it's, he looks like he can have a little sprint, technically super smooth, but he just looks. Ter like he's terrific not, climber as yeah, well. But he's not, it's like everything, he's, he's very composed. There's no wasted energy. It's all very efficient. Yeah, he's a real, real superstar. He's a real deal superstar in the making, Adrian Boishi. And we've seen, of course, the dominant figures from this category go up into elites. Martin Vidari, another man who, uh, quickly penned the deal with Specialized Racing. He's been up and around the top 20 in the elites. We'll see him in action later on this afternoon. Really, really uh, patient head on Vidare as well. Just, you know, absolutely, I think he won every race apart from the UCI World Champs as a junior. And yet he's gone in there and he hasn't tried to force the issue. He's not killed himself trying to win them. He's just get, gaining experience at the front. But at the front of this one, on to lap four then goes Adrian Boishi. Yeah, it's going to be a quick race today. You know, they're going to be done maybe hour and five. Yeah, these um, under 23 riders, their times are so, so similar to the elites actually. Gives you an idea of how hard they're all pushing. Yeah, and we saw obviously world championships, Boishi going head to head with Charlie Aldridge. Oh, Charlie Aldridge, a bit of an anomaly in the fact he's a U23 rider, but has decided with his team to race in the elites. So, but it proves that they're, I mean, Aldridge having a cracking year. In, yeah, he's in, been in super um, But these guys are, they're top 20 elites. That's where they're at, you know, already in their, in their career. If you put any of these guys into the senior race later today, uh, on a fair gridding, you know, which is <laughs> another another yeah, don't old discussion. <laughs> um, they're, 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 top, they're top 30 guys in the world. Yeah, yeah they're, they're that good. And the, that, the strength in depth, like I've mentioned before, in the U23s this year, some years you get real standout and it's a one rider. And, you know, every year, they're gonna, every race, sorry, they're going to win. Here, you've got a different winner in every race and they're just pushing each other. And yeah. I think that's going to only help them when they step up to elites next year because they've just had such a scrap all year in, in the U23s. It's been one of the highlights of every uh, every cross-country racing weekend, this under-23 men's race, because of that, because of the depth of the talent and its propensity for drama, coupled with 120, 110 riders on the line every week. But Boishi currently leads Riley Amos by 23 seconds. If you're out front uh, with that kind of lead, Ollie, What's going through your head? Are you just ticking off sections? Are you trying to balance it? Do you know that you've got a comfort blanket? The way that Boishi's riding today, I think he actually doesn't... He's not thinking about it. He's just doing a Pauline Perron Bravo. Yeah. Where it's... He'll be getting some, some time gaps, but I think he's just in his zone. You know, he's mentally, physically, and on this course, he's, he's got it absolutely dialed. You know, it's almost like when he set off today, He's already in his, I think in his brain, he, he's the way he's, he's, he's got it won. Yeah. The way he's riding, there's nothing else that's going to happen other than him win the race today. No, he has literally and figuratively never looked back. No. Amos now 25 seconds, another two seconds. 
you mentioned earlier on about a second here, a second there, all that up, and they are doing so for Trinity Racing's Adrian Boishy. And interesting as well. So obviously this is an age-dependent category. It's U23. They have about four years in this category after they've stepped up from juniors, which is under 18. And Boishy is one of the younger riders here. So, yeah, birthday 2003, whereas 2001 for Carter Woods. So he's got another two, three years left in this category if he wants it. So he might be another one like an Aldridge that makes a decision to step up and race elites earlier than he needs to. Yeah, Boishy's last win this season. Coming in the Leah gang. The third round. Then a trio of second places at the UCI World Cup in Val de Sole Trentino. Then, of course, the UCI World Championships in Glentress Forest. Yeah, I mean, what a race that was. Oh, that was, well, I think, my favourite race from the champs. That was, was superb, was, yeah. Well, you know, a real good group of three, four, sorry. And then Boashi and Aldridge going bar to bar on the main climb to get the the run into the descent and it was you know five ten seconds at the finish it was yeah yeah Aldridge, cracking stuff Aldridge is the, the joker in the pack in that race was um, a superb part and he played it well left of the rainbow stripes Amos looking fast through there pulled the second back yeah on the descents he's a little more wild than Boishy I think they you know both amazingly good technically yeah he's had a couple Amos. of flats this season Amos hasn't he as well just um, on descents I think he'll push the limit a little bit more. Yeah. What it, what it appears like. But today, as what you saw on that corner when we saw Emma, the dust coming off, and he was really having to, to use his body weight to kind of get that edge of the tyre to grip in. It's so loose, and it's going to get looser and looser during the day. By the time we get to the, the senior races back end of the day, it's going to be, yeah, really loose, really dusty. Yeah, it's heating up out there. In the Red Bull Roots and Rolls section. And the chainsaws are firing into life. Yeah, you don't often see them at the XC races. <laughs> I'm, I am amazed there is any pre-mixed chainsaw fuel left in the Leger area after that downhill race we had yesterday. 25 seconds now the gap between Boishy and Riley Amos, but yeah, the, the roar of the chainless chainsaw Really synonymous with mountain bike racing. And somebody's just cracked one into life here in Leger. So the key one here for Boishy is doing all the simple things right. So one of those simple things he needs to get right is he needs to keep drinking, keep taking on some car. You saw on the second lap taking a, a carbohydrate energy gel and just keeping those sugar levels topped up, keeping hydrated, keeping the tires inflated on those rock gardens, making no mistakes. There is Keeping the cool, that's the, the first time we've seen anybody Yeah, I was going to say, the first of probably many shots today of people struggling to stay cool. Just cooling that core temperature down a bit. It is, and it has been, baking hot all week here. In Leger, Haute Savoie. You can see the track baked to a crisp. That early morning dew mostly burnt off now. But we talked a bit about the mental aspect of XC, and it's on this zigzag climb that it's, uh, it really comes to the fore. So you can see that rider in front, and if they're having a slightly bad patch, you can see the guys chasing you down. And vice versa, if you're having a great time, you can see your prey, <laughs> kind of two switchbacks up. And Amos is still looking. He hasn't given up the fight by any means. No, he has not. He's still in there. He's still swinging at it. Riley Amos. Yeah, Luca Martin pushing hard. Carter Woods. Luca Martin, one of those riders that isn't, uh, let's just say, blessed with the poker face of uh, an Adrian Boishy where you can't no, really tell no. what's going on. Luca Martin, the teeth clenched. All action for Orbea. Oh, and that's a tire off. Oh. For the Prima Floor Mondraker rider. Bjorn Riley, bit of a comeback coming back through. 
Dario Lillo, second in the overall, down in seventh at the minute, Ollie. There he is on screen yep. now. Luke Vidman looks like he's attacking this group and he's had enough of waiting. Big Swiss rider. Oof. That was a. Uh, <laughs> yeah. See, he knows it's not the short track, right? It, I hope someone <laughs> said to him, yeah, he's threatening to turn the earth back on his axis with that kind of output. Big Swiss rider, another big, big talent that we maybe just haven't seen the best of this season yet, Luke Vidman, but there's Dario Lillo in that Swiss national champs jersey, so... Yeah, there's not a whole lot to play in terms of the points, but Boishy is certainly extending it. Yeah, and the rider was coming up through there, and he had a great race in the short track, Paul Scheel, number 35. He was fifth at the first race, but since then, hasn't been up to much. No. He is obviously coming back into a bit more shape now. Boishy looking silky smooth out there. I mean, what a ride. Super composed so far. And that's the nice thing. He's got this nice little buffer. Doesn't have to take any risks on these descents. Can just ride his own speed. And sometimes on the loose stuff, if you ride that one notch back, you can sometimes be a little quicker. Mm -hmm. You know, when you're pushing hard, say, Riley Amos, it's like, he's, he, he's got the fight. He's got to close the gap. Sometimes you end up breaking a bit late into some turns. You don't carry the speed. So you've, you're pushing harder, but going slightly slightly slower. Look at Boishy through those berms, though. Absolutely superb descendant. You can see the dust kicking up now. But yeah, it's a great XC course, this one. It's a good XC course, isn't it? It's two good climbs, short lap. You can see it all on one hillside. Great for spectators, yeah. too, yeah. They can get Absolute around cracking, here really yeah. easily. Having to really try and get that side edge on the tyres dug in on that grass. Still pretty slippery. Yeah, 32 seconds now. Yeah. The gap between our leading pair. The rider second in the overall title race, Dario Lillo, down in seventh currently be behind Bjorn Riley in sixth and Luke Vidman, who we saw accelerate away from them in fifth. So he's got his uh, he's got his targeting system set for Carter Woods in fourth place. And that would be a powerful duo should those two get together on course. So the following chase group then, led by Martin Carter Woods, 48 seconds now back on Adrian Boishy. Yeah, and I think what you said before about the overall, it's really interesting. Now, once you get to this stage of the season, you know, six races out of eight, that starts coming into play as a rider. I think at the start of the season, you kind of don't worry about it. It's kind of, you can't get your head around that far ahead. But once you're into now, Boishy is obviously going to be looking like he, at the moment, going to extend his overall but there's a big fight going on for that podium in the back end and you can see you know Riley Amos he could jump up another spot and get onto that third place if he if he keeps that second place that he's in at the moment so there's a lot to play for well two to go for Adrian Boishy yeah, energy gel going down but I say that sort of thing it's they have a plan before they start I'm gonna have an energy gel at this lap an energy gel at that lap I'm gonna have a bottle of this here it's all Planned in advance. Scheduled out. Yeah. And there is a, a visual on the gap. Riley Amos heads towards the start line. He'll see the two to go sign. Let's just see what the clock says in terms of that split. Yeah, and it won't make nice viewing. <laughs> so it says... It says in our, in our booth, 33 seconds back now. And it's just like it's starting to stretch a little bit. It's been death by a thousand cuts, hasn't it? There yeah. hasn't been one big attack from Boishy. He's just kept that pressure on, and it's been a second here, a second there for the last five laps. Or and four I, laps, sorry. And I think if I was Amos now, I'd be like, OK, consolidate second. You, you, he had that bit of hope, you know, and it was you know, really unlucky, that first lap crash going down on that wet bridge. But I think, you know, the way that Boishy took it on from the start, I don't... Look at the lap times as well from Adrian Boishy. 10.24, 10.53, 10.52, 10.52. It's just been metronomic. Metronomic, yeah. <laughs> but that first lap as well. Yeah, that's 30-odd seconds. But I always say if I'm, you know, riders or coach, or even when I was riding, you want to get all your laps, 30 seconds. You know, yeah. and I always remember the master of this when I was a younger rider was Thomas Frischneck. 
manager now at the Scott team. And you could always see as races, you get your lap times back and some people would have a bad one or a bad last lap. Frishies were always like, Doosh, doosh, doosh. Doesn't matter yeah. where he finished, whether he won the race or had a bad day, his laps were always bobbing. I just went, he, he was my hero, he's the boy, you know? <laughs> so, and I just went, that's how you do it. We're within 30 seconds, and I think if you get to the end and you say you've done all the basics right, your laps are within a really good time, you've, you've, got, you've done your best. Well, there is a slow-mo shot of somebody whose Sunday morning has not gone according to plan. One of the... Prima Flor Mondraker riders, another rider walking on course at the minute. You can see all down the back of his leg that white uh, silicon sealant. No tubes in these racing lightweight cross country racing tires, of course. Instead, they this clinch themselves onto the rim, and then there's a, that sealant liquid that's inside it that plugs any holes that should pop up. That's the theory, anyway. But once you roll one off the rim, there's no plug in it. And this is the technical, the, the, the risk, sorry, of these big rock gardens. They're not really gnarly. You know, they, 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 there's a line through them. But if, if you go offline, if you go offline, you can have a real big, sharp impact on one of these rocks. And that's enough force for the tubeless tyre to get blown off the rim. And once it's off, it, it, there's no coming back from that. It will fix the small flats, the fawns and the bits and bobs, the small cuts. But if you wall up one of these big rocks on a corner, you know, you, it, you're done. 35 seconds now back to Riley Amos. You know, and the fastest lap of the race, though, does belong to Riley Amos so far with a 10.50. But she second in that, 10.52. Then it's Luca Martin with 10.54. But yeah, top five covered by eight seconds in terms of fastest laps. That kind of indicates that gulf of talent we talked about. Yeah, it just shows how competitive this category is, and, and also as well, yeah, the speed that Boashi has gone out from the gun. Ollie, I've always, I've always wondered, is it, is it possible to be cursed as a racer with a talent pull around you that's too deep? Yeah, 100%. You know, yeah. you, you sometimes you see riders walk through, you know, from juniors into elites relatively unchallenged because they've had the good fortune that they're the standout rider of, of yeah. that particular group. and. There's other years, I mean, basically, yeah, we're seeing in front of us today where there's so many big hitters and there's so many, like, those top five riders could all lay claim to being the next big yeah. thing. Yeah. And that makes it tougher. Uh, I think short-term tough, you know, because you, you can get lost and you're not going to necessarily get you. You think, oh, I could win these races and you might be the best thing domestically. You step up and internationally, you keep getting eights and ninths. And you yeah. think, oh, man. But long-term, I think it does you nothing but good. Because at some point, you've got to go to the elites. And then the elites, there's always strength in depth. Yeah. And if you've got used to winning easily, and you see it sometimes riders domestically, especially as juniors, they win every race. And then they step up to a world where there's a, there's a bigger, like I say, talent pool. And mentally, they can't handle it. You know, in this sport, most riders take a kick in <laughs> week in, week out. And you've got to get used to it. You know, there's not many Nino. There aren't many Ninos knocking about. There's just a one. He's coming up later on this afternoon. The greatest of all time. If we're looking at the Swiss in general, that's the country. There's some riders. I mean, we look at someone like, a, an example, Thomas Litcher. That guy's a cracking rider. Unbelievable. You know, he's had multiple top tens, top fives. He's nowhere near the best Swiss. He's never going to go to Olympic Games in Switzerland. But he's a, if he was in another country, if he was a Brit, XC, yeah. He'd be, he'd be the best. So it's, com it's, it's, it's actually, you think, nationality is the bigger sort of difficulty yeah, when it comes yeah. to talent pools. Yeah, you're right, we have seen so many absolutely cracking Swiss riders over the years just kind of flounder in the, the jet stream of the, the superstars from that country. You know, getting on that Swiss Olympic team is almost harder than winning the Olympic Games yeah. itself. I remember there was one year, that probably the, 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 heart, the, the best nation we've ever seen, and it was a kind of about that 2008 Swiss team. And you had Nino Scherter, you had Florian Vogel, Ralph Neff, leaving the, you know, and there was the, both the Fluckinger brothers, <laughs> Lircher. At one point, I remember one World Cup, they had seven in the front ten, you know, and it's just like, well, <laughs> how can you deal with that? The times change as well, you know, 12 of the top 20 uh, elite men's downhillers, best in the world used to be British. Yeah. And now, very much a changed picture, but 35 seconds is now the gap 
between Adrian Boashi, Riley Amos, Luca Martin, Carter Wood still welded together on the same second, and it's Fidman, Riley, Lilo, Crayer, Shell having a good race up in ninth. Gutierrez Prieto rounds out the top ten. These two, this could be where the real fireworks happen in this race. Luca Martin will not fancy seeing Carter Woods go past him again after ceding that victory to him in Italy earlier in the year. And Carter Woods does a good line in this, doesn't he? He doesn't show his hand, doesn't take too many turns at the front, just motors along and and then saves the firepower for the last lap. There's Luke Vidman behind them. Good showing from him today. Yeah, and he fifth. made that really strong attack we saw last lap. Something lit the fire, and he was like, right, yeah. we're, we're off. He heard something he didn't like <laughs> anyway and got out of there. Beyond Riley as well, he's kind of, you know, the number board's on the on the piss on the ground. I mean, we can see it's kind of like something's gone on, but yeah. he's kind of consolidated. He's coming back through, he's working hard, and he said he had a good run here last year at the World Championships. So clearly likes the course, good climber. The Vidman. Top 10 performances in the first four UCI World Cups of the season. And 12th at the UCI World Championships, Glen Trist oh. Forest. And oh, so Boshi just done clip. And this is the corner. I was, what, I was up here just watching Recky yesterday, saw Evie Richards going around that corner again and again and again, just trying to find. There's no nice line. You're just trying to find the word. And it's that bit that when you get a bit tired, like we saw the Boshi then, you just make that little mistake and you clip out. And we're going to see, and we saw it last year, I think, in the in the senior men's when it was getting really close at the end, and you had Nino versus Valero fighting that last lap. It was these little sections where the gaps appeared. Valero Serrano so strong in that race last year, and it's a difficult place to pass this as well. The, the wide open sections, although they're wide and open, and there's a very definite line that you want to be on, and. Yeah, you've got about from the main section of the woods all the way down to the bottom, you know, to the zigzags and the grass. It really is a one line race. You know, it's going to be very difficult to get past someone. And in terms of taking a drink or a bottle or pouring some water on yourself, you only really got that start straight. You know, it's the whole way down. You're almost not worth taking a bottle, to be honest. You know, you just <laughs> grab a swig in the tech zone. So we've got two tech zones this lap, but only one where you can take a water bottle, which is uh, the first climb. The last two laps, Adrian Boashi, lap three and four, both 10.52s on the nose. That's Taking cool, them off. That. that is cool, isn't it? That's cool in a cross-country geeky world. <laughs> but, <laughs> like, as, I I said it, as I said it out loud, I was like, it's not cool in probably any other sense, but for mountain bikers who are into racing, <laughs> that that's is cool. pretty cool, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's not exactly the Fawns, is it? <laughs> As we see, Ready Amos, Trek Factory racing. Cracking on with his race. Yeah, still a great race. And that first lap, you know, to hit the deck out of nowhere on this little bridge he's going over now. Getting back up, losing 17 seconds to compose yourself. He did a great job there. Yeah, it was carnage, wasn't yeah. it? It took out four or five riders. But it'd be so easy for the head to drop or so easy to get back on your bike and ride like a nutter for a half a lap. But he just kind of got on, got back going again, got into his rhythm really quickly. We talk about it. There's lots of little tiny things in cross-country racing, isn't it? That is just, you mean, oh, mechanical issues for someone out there. Yeah, it's... It looks like maybe a lack of chain or something if he's paddling it. Um, it's racecraft, isn't it? Yeah. It's learning your trade and say every time out on the bike you learn something new. Boashi though, not much you can teach him through those that awkward little rock section before he heads out onto the start finish straight so we can see if he can clock another 1052 here. So the gap was 33 seconds back to Riley Amos as he enters his final lap. Adrian Boashi, he's been perfect so far. No, 11 minutes, so eight seconds slower that lap. Yeah. But we saw that we saw a little bobble over the roots, but really yeah. the only chink in the armor so far yeah. from Boashi today. And like I say, temperature's just starting to wind up a little bit when we saw that last lap cooling himself down. 
And once you, the body temperature, the core temperature starts to rise up to the point when you are feeling your head getting pretty hot, it is making a difference. Well, the gap was 33 seconds. It's still 33 seconds. And it's the first time actually from Boishe we're starting to see the head roll a bit. Starting to, starting to look like he's chopping wood a wee yeah. bit here. Yeah, the legs are starting to f tie up a little bit. I think we need Maybe a little bit of cramp. I really want to see this battle though. I think these two are going to have a ding dong bust up in a second. Carter Woods sits up, takes a go. gel. Some size of a guy. Yeah, he's a big unit, huh? Big, big unit. I mean, Luca Martin's not exactly small either, but out front, Adrian Boishe, 33 seconds into the green. Martin's in third at the minute, Woods fourth, fifth place currently, last spot on the podium. It's Luke Vibman, the Swiss rider. So, Dario Lillo second in the overall, is seventh at the minute, hemorrhaging a boatload of points to this man, Adrian Boishe, in that competition. Yeah, we see yes, yeah, so Carter Woods, Amos, third, fourth overall at the moment. You know, they're the ones that are going to do the jumping up today on the overall. So I think at this point now, Boishe, you, you're counting down the climbs. You know, you count, you know exactly how many small efforts you've got to ride, and you've just got to tick them all off. You know which tech sections you, you know you find more difficult, tick those off. All those chances where you think. Could nail this. There's those two awkward stumps right in the middle of the track. They've not caused too much havoc today, but so far, plenty more racing yet to come. After this, the under 23 women will be on track. Then it's the elite women and then the elite men later on this afternoon. Elite racing from one o'clock here on GCM Plus and Eurosport. So behind Lilo in seventh. Crayer for Germany, Gutierrez Prieto, and Ethan Rose from New Zealand in 10th place. Matis Gay down in 15th. Yeah, and that gap's still stable. Alex Malacarni, the Brazilian teammate of Adrian Boishe, 16th, just ahead of Sasha Hudima in 17th from the Ukraine. Yeah, this is one. Good old scrap going on here. Yeah, this but I think Luca Martin's still chasing. You know, I think he's still thinking of second. I think Carter Woods is like, oh, I'm gonna sit here and just nab you for first. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's uh, Luca Martin, famously combative. I mean, he's got 25 seconds on one lap to pull back on Riley Amos. But I guess if anyone knows how quickly a lead can evaporate, it's him. I've got to keep believing. And that's a key section for Boashi to get through. It's, it's techy, but really loose. There's a lot of opportunities for a, for a tumble on that one. It's super loose, he's got these dead flat curves. Like that big wide line around that log, because yeah. I guess it delivers him into that second log a bit straighter, a bit cleaner. Yeah, and just using a bit less energy. You know, the other one, you've got to do a big hop. You've got to use quite a lot of effort, energy, muscles to get over a log, whereas he just goes, well, actually, I'll just roll around the corner. Yeah, well, it might be, as one section, tiny bit slower, but you know, it, it's energy conservation, I think, is, is really key with that bit. Well, he's been absolutely, I mean, he's been superb all season long, Adrian Boishe, but this in particular has been a commanding performance. He just rolls off the blind drop. And this one's super tough. You don't quite see it from this angle, but as you come in from it there, as you come over the top and crest it, you cannot see yeah. what's coming. It's completely blind, coming to the roots. I mean, this is where he's got, they spend lap after lap after lap wrecking this. So looking to put a trio of second places, a streak of second places to bed. He was second in Val de Sole Trentino, second in Glen Tress at the World, second in Palar and Sal Andorra. No more of that today for Adrian Boishe, he's fed up with it. Going for the number one spot and in some fashion. Yeah, and if you're going to win one, well, if you're going to win one. Win a home one, eh? There is a bit of extra jeopardy floating about this weekend as well due to a French Olympic selection. Yeah, yeah. Being a, a criteria. So I think we can expect to see this. We can see, expect to see French riders right at the front. Yeah, especially, I mean, for the elite women and men, 
For Boashi, I think that's going to have to wait for another four-year cycle before he gets involved in that. But yeah, for the elite women and men, there's a lot of Olympic races within races. Yeah. The pressure's on here this weekend, Leger. Yep. Hope what? And we mentioned before about these under 23 riders chasing contracts in the other teams. It's people <laughs> trying to hold contracts. Exactly, you know? yeah. Yeah, you don't want the music to stop and you don't have a chair left. Yeah. Riley Amos currently fastest lap, 10.50.4 on his fourth lap. Sorry, excuse me, his second lap. So that was when he was chasing back on. Average speed of 23.24. 23, 23 kilometers an hour. Yeah, he's looking. This is some performance we're seeing here from Boashi. To go yeah. at it like that and take it on from the gun. And we head to the US next, Riley Amos. You know, his home round. Snowshoe. Yeah, still a lot of fight in Amos, but I think today just Boashi just too strong. He's not, the thing is, bar that crash, he's not done much no. wrong today, Riley Amos, yeah. at all. But these two oh. behind him, they're not that far off the back of Amos now. 13, 13 seconds. The train's coming. Carter Woods is definitely a passenger on that train. Led <laughs> Carter Woods. <laughs> yeah. He's got such reserves of horsepower. And as I say, we have seen him play tactically, play his cards perfectly this season. So this is that last. This is probably the last big, big effort now. For Boashi, it's so steep this climb. You, it's very loose as well. You can't get out the saddle and use your body weight. You've just got to sit in the seat, grind it out. Doesn't do it justice as to how steep that yeah. is. All these, uh, all these playlists has just come on out in the course somewhere. The drone giving us just a really good angle of how hard these racers have to work the whole way around. So we've got this annoying, nasty flat corner, all the roots. See if he can nail this from the last time he bobbled last time. He just goes to the left, makes it work. Yeah. And again, through here, there's a couple of lines that uh, um, a bit more uh, faster, but more treacherous. We saw Tom, He's going for the safe line then. We really. saw Tom Pidcock come and stuck through there actually at the UCI World Championships last year. Oh, I was along here somewhere. There is Amos. As we say, bar that first lap crash on the wooden drop. Done very, very little wrong today, right? Amos, a track factory racing, but the crowd, as they have done, all oh, race long, getting behind Boashi now, starting to sense another French win. Yeah, you see the, how big all these roots are through that section. Boashi. And again, it's just all race, super composed. Other than one clip out, <laughs> yeah, that, like, that's, that's all I can mark him down for is one wobble. Everything else has just been super smooth, super composed. Even round yeah. those berms, absolutely yeah. perfect. Just nailing the radius of each of them. And out onto that bridge that cost Riley Amos really his chance at the front of this one. But no, it's heavy off at that time, Washi, but he won't mind. He's nearly home. Very, very cool. I do like the fact there's some wide, widely taped off camber grass turns. It wouldn't be a mountain bike race in France without a few of those, would it? <laughs> it's pretty old school, eh? Yeah, it's super fun to ride as a mountain biker, but this deep into a cross country race, fun isn't what you're looking for. Amos, I think he knows he's coming, he's got some company. He's yeah. probably had a look behind. Seen Woods and Martin. It's probably got dark all of a sudden as the, sh <laughs> yeah. the shadow of Carter Woods has arrived. Yeah, 28 seconds back now, Riley Amos doesn't really do the man's service for the effort he's put in today. Yeah, cracking race, cracking race as well. But I'd say really difficult to recover from a crash like that. He reset well, but he had no answers before. Well, as I said earlier on, it really was death by a thousand cuts. It was a second here, then another second, then another second.
tour. Il était accompagné de Ray Amos, qui est maintenant à 20 secondes. Here he comes then, through the rocks. Adrian Boisci sits up, takes the celebrations. What an absolutely superb way to clinch your second UCI mountain bike World Cup. Under 23 cross country, Olympic distance win off the season. Adrian Boisci wins at home in France. Adrian Boisci wins. UCI Mountain Bike World Cup. Haute Savoie Léger. In some style, too. Right, Amos, thanks the crowd. Winner in Andorra. Second today, Carter Woods <laughs> has has blasted past Luca Martin to the point that he, he may have blasted him off the track somewhere. Boisci's already getting the uh, winner's photograph under the arch, done and dusted. Where's Martin? Here he goes. Luca Martin, a spent force. Well, Woods let him do all the work the whole way round. Proper tucked him up there. <laughs> Absolutely stitched up like a Kemper, Luca Martin. But fourth place today on the podium. Another podium in France as well. Carter Woods celebrates with Boisci. Great ride from Carter Woods out in the third. Yeah. Yeah, bigger rider on a on a kind of, I guess, climbing heavy circuit. The climbing's quite steep as well, but he did the best with his, the kind of skill set or, or the form he had on the day, I think. Just sitting there, riding really smart, sitting off the back of Martin, and in the last lap, just smoking him. Not far. Eight seconds off. Emma. Here's fifth place, Luke Wiedemann then. Fiedman, good ride for him. Good ride from this man too, Bjorn Riley. We think he's had an issue somewhere given that that number board's hanging off, but kept it together, kept us cool. Dario Lilo, not a great day for the overall title hopes for this man. The Swiss rider home, 1 minute 53 seconds behind his title rival, Adrian Boisci. Crayer crosses the line, the German. Yeah, happy with that ride. Yeah, yeah, good, good performance. A lot of German fans here this weekend. Gutierrez Prieto, Canyon Collective, home in ninth. Then it's Rose from New Zealand. Fertalis, home in tenth. Shell. And Musi. Conillon. Sprint finish coming in. Here's the winner. Adrian, congratulations. Another win for you in this cross country Olympic uh, specialism. How pleased are you with that performance? You won by 23 seconds. Yeah, I mean, I felt amazing, and that's what I drive for, that's what I train for. Like, I don't really care about the results that much. I just want to be the best I can be. and. It felt like today everything came together. I had amazing legs, I could push forever, and I started hard and just never wanted to slow down. And then in last lap, I just enjoyed it, enjoyed the home crowd, and well, I still live seven hours from here, but it's still in France, so. Exactly, and speak to me about that home crowd, because they gave you a warm welcome over that finish line, didn't they? Well, it's still nine in the morning, so not everyone is there, and I guess the, one, the guys who were partying for the down here are not not wake up yet so yeah i wish our race was later and we could have more crowd but it's still pretty nice well you still got the win congratulations thank you pretty cool guy ollie isn't he yeah what dude yep i just wants to be the best he can be <laughs> and he's ran the google maps to distance to where he lives <laughs> and admitted that a lot of people maybe maybe just still tucked up in bed after those celebrations last night but they won't dent his this evening. Adrian Boisci, second win. UCI World Cup season in France. Yeah, if you're XC coming, rider coming to Leger, you need your earplugs. Yeah. You definitely, <laughs> definitely do. I'd say, actually, I'd extend that to you if you're a general human being. <laughs> Bring your earplugs. It was pretty raucous last night. Adrian Boisci then. Takes the win by 23 seconds ahead of Riley Amos. Carter Woods is third. 
Luca Martin, the rider who was third for most of the race, is fourth then. Vidman, then Riley, Lilo, Crayer, Gutierrez, Prieto, Rose. The top 10 covered by two minutes gives you an idea of the pace of Boishi out front. Shell, Muzi, Cornillo, Matisse Gay, Grolambert, Malacarne, Hudima, Barroso Gomez, and Pedersen. Here are the highlights then. Washi starting in the middle of your screen in the red and white overall leader's jersey on the number one bike. Smashed his way to the front. It was absolutely superb with his first couple of laps, Ollie. He really thinned the herd out a tree. Literally, like you said in the interview, he had he just keep pushing and pushing his legs and he didn't give up. And he went from the first climb, got the whole shot, put his head down, split the race. He'll have been surprised to have been alone with uh, Amos as well as yeah, early as that. Back in like 2003. And that was that crash that took Amos out. Yeah, it's nasty looking when you see it back, isn't it? Yeah. It's Caused almost like chaos behind them. It's like a youth being framed classic, this one, isn't it? It's yeah, like, like student champs, <laughs> uni champs. Um, but sunlight hit it, evaporated off that. Overnight Jew was left in the course. Yeah, and Riley Amos recovered well from that crash. Lost through away 17 seconds, but came back pretty quick. Got back on it straight away. No damage to himself on his bike. And the light started peeking into the woods. It's really strange that that uh, bridge took out, that drop took out so many people. Yeah. You would think that that would have been spotted on recce's and just, yeah. I guess, when you're racing, it's not always that obvious yeah and it, these guys are the first guys on the race course so they haven't got any kind of teammates that have got up and ridden before it they probably have just because it's cold they've probably warmed up on indoor yeah. trainers not on the course and a number of factors why they probably hadn't have ridden that bridge yeah an easy one to say from the, the cozy confines of a, a commentary booth but out front it was all boishi all the time And then the victory, great to see. French flags flying in the crowd behind him. Yeah, cracking race, absolutely cracking. Riley Amos can be proud of that performance. Only did one thing wrong. Carter Woods, with a great train robbery. Sat behind Luca Martin for the duration and then blasted past him. We haven't got we haven't seen where he did it, but it must have been some acceleration because the gap was sizable by the end. Uh... Let's check out the results then. Boishi ahead of Amos by 23 seconds. It was much more than that for a lot of the race. Carter Woods was third, Luca Martin fourth, Luke Vidman and fifth for Thomas Maxon. Then it's Riley Lilo, championship contender. A bit further down the order than he would have liked. Dario Lilo, and we will get confirmation. But well, let's hear from Riley Amos. Riley, a fantastic result for you today here in Leger. You do look a little bit injured on your left leg there. Uh, a pretty brutal race for you? Yeah, super brutal. Uh, Crazy fast start. Adrian just hit it from the gun on the start. But uh, end of the first lap, I was kind of uh, away with him. We had a small little gap. And there's this one little bridge before the grass section that I turned onto in the morning dew. I didn't even see it coming. I just wiped out super hard and broke my shoe and cu cut my leg up a little bit. But I tried to jump up as quick as I could and just stay on it. And I was kind of by myself racing all day with a small gap to third and fourth. So I could just see them pushing me all day. and. Yeah, I felt really good, and Adrian was a better racer today, but second place for my uh, last World Cup in Europe this year, I can't complain. It was a great year, so, yeah. My congratulations. Thank you so much. Thanks, everybody. There we have it. You you did mention that the shoes yeah. can take a hide in, in crashes, and, and not just an, an annoying niggle that Riley Amos will have yeah, had I mean, to ride through. You see just on the climb, some of them, they have these uh, like Kevlar laces with the little wind-up buckles. 
He's got two buckles on his shoe, so I guess one of them broke, but you've still got the second one still to keep things in place. And unfortunately, some of them only run one. And if you go down, lose that one. And most of the riders in the tech zone will probably have a spare set of shoes. So they can come in, but I mean, it's less than ideal. I think if I came in needing to replace the shoes, the job would be done. <laughs> I don't think it'd be People much. coming to change the color, because it didn't suit. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've seen this year sunglasses being changed um, a lot. Let's head down there again now, though. Carter, it was a real battle for that bronze place today, but you pulled through, you dug deep. How tough was it out there? Yeah, it was tough. Uh, obviously, racing early in the morning, there was a few uh, changes of the track. First lap, the grass was pretty wet and there was some, uh, some people crashing, so I worked my way through that. Um, yeah, and then I found myself sort of fourth wheel for most of the race, uh, yeah. Where do you find, uh, you know, that motivation when you're in the race to, you know, overtake and, and um, triumph? Yeah, yeah, no, I had a, I've had a couple tough XEOs lately, so I was just sort of trying to get in, uh, feel comfortable, and then, yeah, I normally have a pretty strong last lap, so I just managed to, uh, yeah, save it till the last climb, and, um, yeah, it was a good battle out there. Luca was really strong, uh, setting the tempo all day, so, no, it was a good, good day. Congratulations. Thank you. There we go, Carter Woods. Seemed happy with that one. Yeah, I think he rode really well, really smart. You know, he realized he didn't have the legs. He's a racer, isn't he? Yeah. Sometimes, you know, you go out and you go, yeah, I haven't quite got it today, so what's the best? And you kind of recalibrate your goals. He did a smart race today. You know, he could have ended up trying to follow the front two, Mbwashi, blowing his doors and coming away with a ninth or a tenth. But by riding smart, smashed that third. Yeah. Yeah. Smart guy. Big race from the big man. Things just livening up here in Leger. Full days cross country Olympic discipline racing. Yet to come on the 23 women underway next. Then after that, one o'clock elite women, followed by the elite men. Two absolutely fascinating races. Full of French riders getting ready to go toe to toe as well as the rest of the world's best. Car Woods, third place today, clever race. Did well. I'm always amazed by just how fresh they look on the podium after those kind of efforts. Even in those yeah. post-race interviews, Adrian Boisier looked like he just stepped off his paper round. I think the way he did most of that race, he looked like he was yeah. just having, having a steady hour on the course. You know, really, really composed ride. Riley Amos puffs the cheeks. Not his stay today, but still good enough for second place, which is a testament to him. Ready in a second place today. And your winner today of the U23 men's XCO World Cup here in Osawa. Here he is. The European FTV Champions jersey on him. Adrian Boishi. Unstoppable today. UCI Mountain Bike World Series Festival Haute Savoie here in Leger. Keeping himself Second UCI World Cup win of the season for this young man. Yeah, he's the real deal, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> absolutely, there's no other yeah, word I love, for I love it. how he races, uh, like style on the bike, interview afterwards, cool guy. Really, yeah, really cool, cool guy. customer, Adrian Boishi, but as cool as they get. And it'd be interesting, I think, you know, so we go stateside afterwards. Woods, Amos, they'll be super excited. A, it's a long time to be away from home in Europe. Well, there, there we go. We just, you know, the Frenchman's won in France. We go to the US next. There's an American on the podium, and beside him, there's a Canadian where we finished the season in Mont Saint Anne. Yeah, I mean, those guys, they would have looked at the calendar, and there's a big yellow <laughs> underlining <laughs> <laughs> for those races in the same way that Boishi would have had today. You know, that's the one. Every World Cup's like an A race, yeah. but your home one's like double A, A yeah. plus. They matter more. They matter more at home. 
No, you and Bart reckoned it was worth 5% extra. Also brings with a pressure racing at home though, but this man dealt with it superbly and he can stay where he is for the time being because he's got another jersey to collect here. It's true, we had World Cup cross countries in Fort William and then later on we had in Dolby. You know, I had my best World Cups when it was at home, you know, it's, or Belgium. <laughs> or Belgium, Belgium. right, yeah. <laughs> The spiritual home of being cold and muddy. Yeah. Washi takes the plaudits. And takes that overall title leader's jersey. And obviously extended his lead massively today with Lilo coming down in seventh, I think, wasn't it? So, yeah, not great for Lilo that. I mean, still a top 10 finish. But he has hemorrhage points to this man. Well. You don't have long to wait before we go racing. Number 23 women. They're heading to the call-up boxes at the minute to get warmed up. As Leger continues itself to warm up. In the morning sun. These three though, class of the field this morning. Boishe, Amos, Carter Woods. Champagne breakfasts. There is confirmation then of the overall standings. Boishe leads by 161 points ahead of Lilo. Some breathing space between the pair of them at last. Carter Woods is third. Riley Amos fourth. Vidman in fifth. Then Martin Riley, Malacarne, Shellikins, Mattis Gaze in tenth. Fatone in eleventh. Trudler twelfth. Mario Bear there in fourteenth. Yep, as I say, next race, 11 a.m., women under 23. That has got plenty of intrigue about it as well. On a track that only deals in bangers. Thanks for joining us. Plenty more racing to come this afternoon. We'll be back imminently. Don't go anywhere.